Hello, my friends. Welcome to Module 5, Task Analysis. I love this little quote down here which says, Statistics can be made to prove anything, even the truth. I wish I could be credited with that statement, though I fully concur with it. This lecture will provide insight into the following. We're going to give an overview of task analysis. We're going to talk about the assessment of task difficulty, development of a skill hierarchy, and examine the outcomes of a skill hierarchy. Uh, task analysis is an analysis of how a task is to be accomplished. And uh, task analysis may include the following components. Now, note that I said may. Uh, don't have to have all of them. May have more than them. May replace them with something else, but may include the following components. This is just a fairly good plan, which I'm going to share with you. First of all, a detailed description of both manual and mental activities. Tasks require things that must be done by hand, must be done physically, but also things that must be done mentally. Uh, task frequency, allocation, complexity, environmental conditions, necessary clothing and equipment are important, and any other unique factors involved in or required for one or more people to perform a given task. Task analysis develops a plan to move from point A to point Z. And information from a task analysis can then be used for many purposes, such as personnel selection and training design. Uh, now, task analysis usually involves the six steps. Now, you noticed again a well while ago I said may. Now, I say usually. Uh, certainly, there are many plans. Uh, I love uh, the old quote from the movie Full Metal Jacket. This is a plan. There are many like it. This one is mine. First, observe the task as it is being done. In, in, in interview an expert performer. Now, you don't want to interview a novice. You want to interview, interview someone who knows what they're doing. Interview the supervisor of the typical performer. Utilize a task force to develop support for the standardization of the task. You don't want to depend on just one person. You want to put together a task force of those who really know what they're doing in order to uh, delineate the, the steps that are necessary for the task to be done. Brainstorm improvement strategies with a target population of uh, performers. Here's the, here's the plan. How might we improve the plan? And validate all activities with a final observation. Now, a skill hierarchy is a tool that contains all the skills needed to complete a specific task and how the skills are related to each other. Skills hierarchy is sometimes called a pyramid of objectives. Skill hierarchies delineate which skills must be learned before others can be attempted. They're often represented visually as a pyramid. Uh, some of you may remember having seen Maslow's hierarchy of needs drawn out as a pyramid, which starts with the things you have to have. You have to have food, shelter, air, and then, and then you move on up the pyramid towards the other things. The ability to draft a skill hierarchy is one of the most important steps in performance analysis. If we're going to analyze performance, we must know what skills are necessary in order to perform a specific task. Now, a skill hierarchy begins by identifying what needs to be done, develops a list of skills required to complete the task, and establishes the relationships between those skills. Now, don't overlook that last statement. Establish the relationship between those skills. We're going to talk about that a little bit more in just a moment. A plan for developing a skill hierarchy follows. Now, phase one, derive your hierarchy using a top-down procedure. Begin with a terminal objective. What is, what is the end objective? For example, if dealing with auto repair, an objective could read, given access to all tools, materials, and standard equipment, and a flat tire having a single puncture, repair the tire, time limit 20 minutes. Now, when you give, get your terminal objective identified, you want to give it a shorthand uh, name. You know, we don't want a name that's six miles long. There are two rules for choosing a shorthand name. The action is always described, followed by the object of the action. Examples uh, follow such as repair, repair flat T 
tire or fixed flat tire. Those are, those are good terminal objective names. Now, phase two, make a skills list. Now, review the terminal objective and answer this question. What are the most essential skills that make up this activity? What does someone need to be able to do before being able to perform or practice the terminal skill? So, you know, what you want to do, you're trying to develop a step-by-step -step hierarchy of what must be done in order for the skill to be accomplished. You want to summarize each of the skills. That's what you're trying to do. You're, you're identifying the skills, and then you're going to want to summarize each of them. Now, phase three, you make a draft of the hierarchy. Uh, locate the major, most complex subskills and list them under the terminal objective. You test whether the skills are independent of one another. By, do this by asking of each pair of skills, is it true that either of these skills can be learned without knowing how to do the other? That means they're independent. We don't have to know A in order to do B. We don't have to know B in order to do A. You may find that these skills are, are, are at the same level, and you can place them side by side. If one must be done before the other, then you can, you can indicate that the other one is subordinate to it. Now, you make a draft of these things, and you stop just above the point where there would be absolutely no disagreement about whether the population has a skill in question. When in doubt, take the hierarchy down one more level. For example, if there's any question about whether intended trainee, trainees can read, the target language to the level specified in the objective include can read English or whatever language is pertinent uh, to the hierarchy. So you're not wanting to list all of those things that, uh, that there's no debate that everyone could do, but you're wanting to identify those things that perhaps not everyone can do and get your foundation and then move forward. Add the remaining skills to the hierarchy, placing them under the skills that are, they are subordinate to, to draw the links the line, and draw the lines between the skills. Now, draw lines to show the relationship between the skills. Once you've got them all listed up, what is the relationship? When all the subordinate objectives before you put them together into a hierarchy to show their relationship, push the pieces around until you're satisfied you can describe and defend your hierarchy to someone else. Use a large piece of paper and use a pencil to draw the lines between the skills. And man, some of you who are really digitally savvy, just get on the computer, draw it on there, and then you can do all sorts of things with it. But for some of us older folks, we may have to have the pencil and paper. Maybe the older folks that are using the computer and the kids may have to have the pencil and paper. Who can, who can tell? Now, phase four, you test the hierarchy to assess the appropriateness of the depiction of the skill relationships. For each pair of skills connected by a vertical line, is it true that one cannot practice this skill pointing to the upper one before they can point to the lower one? In other words, you have to know this one before you can do this one. If it is not true, then the upper skill is not dependent on the lower one, and the two should be sewn side by side on the hierarchy. The issue is, what order must they be done in? Must this one be known before you can do this one, or are they really equivalent? For each pair of horizontal skills, is it true that either of these skills could be learned before the other is learned? If not, then one of the skills should be sewn as a prerequisite to the other on the hierarchy. Add subordinate skills where they seem to be missing. So once you get this map drawn out, skills in order, and those things that are that are equivalent, you want to sit down and you want to review it and say, well, did I miss something? Is everything in place? In order, in other words, have I thoroughly done a task analysis? Now modify the hierarchy to reflect needed changes. As you review it, there's nothing that is, is so sacred that it cannot be changed and modified. And keep that in mind. As you discover new issues, you step in and make sure that they can be, that they're changed in your hierarchy. Now, the outcomes of a skill hierarchy, uh, a skill hierarchy is a graphical representation of the skills any learner must possess in order to meet the learning objective. The skill hierarchy shows the relationship among the required skills, and the skill hierarchy determines the sequence of learning the skills 
that, that is part, that sequence that is part of the new task and identifies prerequisites to learning to do the new task. A skills hierarchy can be a very useful tool for mastering a complicated job that requires numerous skills and tasks to be taught. The knowledge can guide employment and training of strategies. In other words, if we can get a good skill hierarchy and we can get it laid out in sequential uh, step, we know step one, step two, step three, the things and how they relate, then it lets us focus on each piece of the skill hierarchy. And when we can master that, then we come up with a very good plan for, uh, for accomplishing the desired task. Now, I want to ask you how we did. Uh, this lecture was intended to provide insight into the following. We wanted to talk about task analysis, what it is that it is analyzing a task, assessment of task difficulty, and a development of a skill hierarchy. So, and then just glance at the outcomes of a skill hierarchy. Hope we met the need that you had for this video. Now, again, I want to thank you very much for your support. Uh, live long and prosper. Uh, your patronage uh, keeps my family fed, and I always appreciate you watching my videos. Now, to be a little bit more modern, I think I'll say may the odds be ever in your favor as you embark upon this task. Have a good one.